is making inferences. And what making an inference is, is taking stuff that you already know and the clues that they give you in the text or in the story or whatever you're reading and coming to a conclusion about it. Okay, I know these are long. I'm going to read them and then we'll do them together. Okay, Jenna was shocked when she opened the door to her apartment. There were long rips in the couch as though someone had run knives down the front of it. A lamp was shattered on the floor. Some picture frames were hanging crookedly and some of them had fallen off the wall and the door to her cat's travel cage was open. Not only that, but the door to the bird cage was swinging back and forth and there were feathers on the floor. She could have sworn that she had locked her cat in the travel cage before she left for work. At first, Jenna thought it might have been burglar. Oh no, she thought. Someone broke into my apartment, trashed the place, and stole my cat. Then she heard the cat meowing in her bedroom. She ran into the bedroom and saw the cat patting on one of Jenna's favorite shoes with its claws. That's it, Jenna yelled. I'm done with this. She threw the cat back into the travel cage and tried to shut the door, but the lock wouldn't catch. Jenna huffed and then grabbed some duct tape. Okay, what happened to Jenna's apartment? It's been trashed or ransacked. Trashed would be the slang word for it, okay? How do we know this? Okay, what were the clues? A lamp was shattered? Picture frames were messed up. Let's see, what were some other clues? Uh, let's see, hanging crookedly. Oh, there were tears in her couch or in her sofa. Okay. Okay, why is there an empty bird cage in her apartment? Okay. Our inference here is that the cat got to it. We can assume that maybe the cat ate it, okay? Because that's what cats do. How do we know? Because the birdcage door was open. And the feathers on the floor tell us that the cat actually got to the bird. At least we think so, unless it's still flapping around the room somewhere. Okay, what is Jenna going to do with the cat? We assume she's going to get rid of it, take it to the SPCA, we hope, not throw it in the river. How do we know? Uh, she yells. I'm done with this. And then the duct tape. Like she's going to tape it together and just get rid of the cat. We hope she's not going to kill the cat. Okay. Okay, next story. Okay. Let me get it a little bit higher up so you can see everything without getting it too crooked. Okay. I'm home, Earl shouted as he walked through the door. His wife, Gail, came bounding down the stairs. She hadn't seen him since he had left to go on his silly fishing trip two weeks ago. I missed you, husband. I don't know why she calls him husband, I don't know. Did you catch anything? Gail, Gail reluctantly asked, knowing Earl was not a very good fisherman. Earl scratched his head and responded, You're not going to believe what I'm bringing home. Earl unzipped a cooler and pulled out several perfectly filleted salmon steaks. Wow, Earl, I didn't know you could fillet a fish like that. Earl looked around the room a little bit and scratched his head. Ah, oh, yeah, Jeff taught me how. Gail looked at him suspiciously. Well, let me help you unpack. As Gail was helping Earl unpack his truck, she found a receipt from the grocery store. It was dated that morning. What she saw was both disappointing and unsurprising. Okay, what did Gail find on the receipt? Probably the salmon steak. How do we know? Um, 
because he doesn't know how to fillet a fish. And he's not a good fisherman. So he probably, she wasn't expecting him to catch anything. Okay, hey, why is why is Gail disappointed and unsurprised at what she thought at what she saw? Uh, she wasn't expecting him to catch anything, um, and didn't. But she, she that's why she's unsurprised. Okay, but she's also disappointed because he lied. So disappointed that he lied, unsurprised that he didn't catch anything. Okay, how do we know this? Uh, it says right here, he's not a very good fisherman. Okay, and she finds the receipt, so she knows he's lying. Let's go on to page two. Okay. And let's see about this business trip Gus is going on. Okay. Let's get it down so you can see. Gus, I need to see you in my office, said Mr. Matthews. Gus nervously shut the door to Mr. Matthews' office behind him and took a seat. Mr. Matthews' office was so high up that Gus had to angle his chair awkwardly so that he couldn't see out the window. Mr. Matthews pointed his finger at Gus and began talking. You've been fitting in great over here and that's one of the most important things you can do in this company. Gus let out a sigh of relief. Mr. Matthews continued speaking. Gus, I want to invite you on a company trip. We will be taking a private jet to Colorado. Gus's eyes widened and his heart began thumping rapidly. Wow, Mr. Matthews, I don't know what to say, Gus replied honestly. Mr. Matthews continued, then we will be climbing up a mountain to a private cabin. Gus loosened his tie a bit and gulped. He was hoping that it would be over, but Mr. Matthews continued, after completing some team building activities, we'll take a hot air balloon ride over the mountains. Gus's heart was now pounding so hard. He was worried Mr. Matthews might see it thumping through his shirt. He was also sweating excessively. Mr. Matthews slapped him on the shoulder. So what do you say, Gus? Gus did not know what to say. Why does the view from Mr. Matthews' office make Gus uncomfortable? He's afraid of heights. How do we know that? He has to angle his chair so he can't see out, so he makes sure he can't look out. And you can tell by the rest of the passage that he's very uncomfortable with the idea of heights, climbing the mountains, a hot air balloon. How does Gus feel about his boss's invitation and why does he feel that way? Um, He's flattered that the boss invited him, but he's fearful more than anything. He doesn't want to go. So I would say in some ways he's conflicted. He's flattered to get the invitation. He feels like he's starting to fit in, but he doesn't really want to go on this trip because he's afraid of heights. Okay. Um, I'd say conflicted and he doesn't want to go. Uh, how do we know? Um, he gulps. His heart is pounding. He's sweating. Okay, but now he also says up here, um, you know, he has a sigh of relief. Okay, so that's why he's conflicted. He felt like maybe he thought at first he was in trouble, you know, but the boss says he's fitting in, so he's relieved at that. 
Uh, why is Gus reluctant to tell uh, Mr. Matthews how he truly feels? He doesn't want to lose his job. And how do we know this? Uh, he said, Mr. Matthews says uh, to him, one of, fitting in is one of the most important things. And we can kind of infer that he's new at the job. And that he was, you know, worried about his job performance. Okay, now next step here. The last one here. Mike got out of the driver's seat of the classic car. He looked at the mailbox and then at the bumper. The mailbox was smashed and bent. The shiny chrome bumper had a dent about the size of a football around the passenger side. Mike shook his head and got back into the driver's seat. He knew what he had to do. He didn't want to do it, but he had to. He drove back home and sat in the driveway for a few minutes, holding his head in his hand. Mike's dad came out of the house carrying a black garbage bag. He smiled and waved at Mike as he passed the driver's side of the car. Then he looked again as he walked past the passenger side of the vehicle. His mouth dropped open and he let go of the garbage bag. In the text, it says Mike knew what he had to do. What did he have to do? He had to tell his daddy he wrecked the car. Okay, how do we know this? Because the mailbox is smashed. Mailbox. Smashed. Uh, he drives and he's got the dent in the car. And he drives home and waits for his dad. Uh, what is Mike going to tell his father and how will his father react that he yeah, had a wreck? what he's going to tell him and how will his father react he'll be disappointed or angry how do we know um well we know because it's we know because of the above stuff that he's had a wreck okay that's pr pretty much proof of that how will his father react he, uh, we know he's going to be bad with his mic holds his head in his hand And his dad drops the trash bag. So it's not going to be good. <laughs>